Here. In, in pool, John, when you get a match that goes hill, hill, that's what we call it, where it's one game for the match, everybody's on the edge of their seat. And what a tremendous end to the frame as well. A incredible cut by Oliver Ortman on the five ball there. And a similar match up here. Very experienced pool player, Thomas Engert. You just heard 15 European titles to his name. Up against Jimmy White. He's another one of the great players from Germany. Oliver, Ralph Soke, Thomas, these are three of the best players in Europe. He's in a difficult position here. He can make the one, but he's got really no good shot at the two ball. The two is right over on the side rail by the side pocket. You see, here's his problem right here is what do you do with that? The two does not go past the five. Yeah, and because of that two wall that you mentioned there, Jay, he's decided to play a safety. Nice safety there. Jimmy can see the one ball. He's on a difficult queuing over the five. The one will go down in the corner pocket. Boy, he shot at the nine. He fired right away at the nine ball. Well, that's interesting there, Jay, because we've seen Jimmy in an earlier match go for some outrageous combinations on the nine and get them. Well, a bad miss there from Thomas. He would have expected to get that one. A bit of good fortune for Jimmy, uh, excuse me, for Thomas, because Jimmy does not have an open shot at the one ball. He's going to have to kick off the side rail here. That's right. Do you think that's a little bit of nerves there from Thomas Angit? I'd be quite surprised because um, we saw him last night playing Efren Reyes, of course, and having a tremendous match against him, winning that match. I think he was focused on that shot, John, on hitting the two ball, which he did. Jimmy came out pretty good here. Thomas has got the eight ball on his way. He cannot shoot directly at the one ball. He may have to try to go kick off this end rail to hit it. Pretty tough ball to hit there. Oh, he's going side rail first. He's going this way. Good hit. Good hit. That's a full ball hit there. As you say, it was a good hit, but he's come out of it not too well. This, of course, is down to the knockout stages now, the last 64. And he's got a chance here of the combination. We've seen Jimmy go for these combinations before. He could be going for the nine here. Well, he's decided the cut, and I think he might decide now that he wish he had gone for the nine. Got away with it, though. Still pretty safe here for Thomas Engert. Well, Thomas has got a good safety here. John, he can come off the edge of the one ball and come down to the end. That's a good shot. Yeah, as you said, Jay, there, quite a straightforward safety for Thomas. The escape shouldn't cause too many problems for Jimmy. It's where he leaves it after the escape. It's a pretty easy ball for him to hit. <laughs> well, once again, he's got out of it. I think we might see Thomas try and bank this ball. Too shallow an angle to put this ball into the left-hand center back, but he walked around and took a look at it. He's, he's trying to decide if he wants to bank. I think the bank is the best shot myself. That is a difficult angle at the side pocket. But it looks like he's cutting the ball. Looks like he's cutting it in the side pocket right there. That's a safety. He didn't fancy either one of the shots there. But Jimmy's got an opening between the three and the five. He can see the one ball. Once again, off the end rail, difficult shot. He couldn't see a full ball. He had to play safe. 
He did so successfully. It's going to stop. That's a good safety there from Jimmy. That was a tough shot to play. You could only see the very right-hand edge of the one ball. And once again, Thomas has no shot here other than to play a safe. There's no pocket for the one ball. What he'll probably do is try to duck the cue ball behind the seven, Jonathan. Let's see. No, if, he, if he's cueing high, to duck the cue ball, you've got to cue below center. It's a draw shot. I think you call it a screw shot here, right? That's right, no. Jay. It's a great wow. bank there. Didn't fancy any of the safety options. Forced him into taking an aggressive shot. Banking the yellow one into the top left-hand bag. The problem with that shot, as you can see, John, is even if he makes it, he doesn't get rewarded. And if he misses it, he could have been in big trouble there. So, I, again, he's in a situation where he's got to play safe. Now, this time, I think he'll leave the cue ball behind the nine ball and just bunt slowly, knock the two away. Well, he went the other way. He's using... He's got the four protecting the two ball. There's an element of going for the bank in that shot as well, Jay, or was that a definite safety there? That was a definite safety. He didn't really have an open bank. Very tactical game here. It is certainly not the sort of game you'd expect from Jimmy White to begin with. You, Jimmy is coming the, through the group stages, playing some very open flowing pool. Surprising a lot of the people here with his knowledge of the game. Well, he's an all-out offensive-minded player. He wants to shoot. If he's got to look at any ball, he's going to fire at it. Now, this is the first open ball in this rack. Thomas has got the two right in front of the pocket. The balls are spread out. This is a good shot here. He's coming across the table so he can shoot the three ball on the side. Right, so after that initial safety battle, it seems to be Thomas Engard who comes out with the first real opportunity of taking the first rack. What's on the line here, John? The winner will advance, will be in the final 32, and guaranteed $1,750, no small piece of change. The loser will be out, tied for 33rd, and get $1,000. But the winner, of course, continues in the quest to win the $60,000 first prize. That's right, Jane. Looking at the draw, the winner from this match may well come up against Efren Reyes in the next. For Thomas Engert, of course, he played Efren Reyes already in the group stages and beat him. Thomas Engert is a seasoned, known nine ball player. Jimmy White is somewhat of a The five, seven, eight, and nine. Left to take the first rack for Thomas Engert. Prior to the last match, I would have said Thomas Engert being a nine ball player was a big favorite over Jimmy White. But after seeing the shock that Tony Drago put on Oliver Ortman, I think anything is possible. These snooker players are such great potters of the ball. They're always going to be in the match. That's right, Jane. They might have taken a few games to get used to it, but so now they've come through the group stages, played at least five games on these tables. They really are up for the challenge of these nine ball tournaments. But it's Thomas Enger who takes the first rack. A chance to see Thomas Engert's break in action here. Engert's leading one game zero. This is the second game of this match. Once again, it's a race to nine. Made a ball on the break. He's got a shot at the one ball here in the side pocket. Again, it's a little bit of a difficult angle, and if he shoots the one on the side, the cue ball may run into the five ball. There's two aspects to every shot in nine ball, John. One is to make the object ball. The second thing, and just equally as important, is to get position for the next ball. Possibility of a bank here as well, which would allow him to. Well, no, he's gone straight for there. Unfortunately for Jimmy, though, the miss hasn't helped him out at all because he's left snookered. Here you can see a lot of power in that, trying to go straight to the centre bag. Now at that angle into these centre bags with power, it's a tough shot. You can see the corner of the pockets are 
square on here. They're not round like a snooker table, and they can be very unforgiving from a shallow angle. He hit it hard like that to avoid the five ball. That was an expert safety by Jimmy White. I wouldn't have thought that he even knew that shot. As you can see, Engert is hidden by the seven ball, the brown ball. He has no shot at the one other than to go to the side rail. This is a very well played safety. That's right, Jimmy could just get through and see the side of the yellow one. Played a perfect safety. Now From it's down to Thomas Engert to get out of the Snooker. It's a big ball to hit. He should hit the ball, and he's, he's going to scratch. And now this is for Jimmy's first real open chance here. We've got to take advantage of this. We've seen Thomas Engert beat Efren Reyes, classed by a lot of people as the most knowledgeable and expert player in the world. I think Jimmy plays almost as fast as Tony. He just doesn't walk as fast. Tony seems into a, in a hurry to get to the next shot. Good shot, perfectly hit. I suspect that Tony showing against Ortman might have been an inspiration to Jimmy because he was up there in the wings watching that whole match. That's right, Jay, he certainly was. And after watching that, he must know that he's got a chance. He's not here to make up the numbers. We've been saying that throughout the last couple of days. Jimmy White has looked incredibly focused in every match that he's played. He wants to get as far as he possibly can in this tournament. Well done here. Well done. Expertly played. Two rail for position on the nine. And nicely down. So it's Jimmy White that levels the match. It's one rack apiece. A race to nine in the last 64. The World Pool Championships. You can see his results earlier on. He's three wins against Mike Hunter, Harold Stolker, and Lou Kondo Jr. Lost his last two matches, but throws three wins, guaranteeing him a place in the last 64. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, third rack. This is the most important shot in the game of nine ball. You've got to have an effective break. Jimmy did break the balls very well there. He's got the three up against the nine, but there's no billiard or combination available to him. Again, he's in a situation where he's going to have to look for some kind of safety. <coughs> Just a little trickle on the red three here to play a snooker behind the nine. I think the shot here, it's a tricky one. I don't see. He can see the edge of the three ball. He could come off the three ball right here and put the cue ball back here. That would be a good shot. I'm not sure if he's got the touch for that. See, as you can see, that was a difficult shot to hide behind the nine ball. He did it about as well as he could. Very close to that nine. Jan Verhaas just checking to see if the balls are touching. It's hard for us to tell up here if he can... He's right up. That may have been, he may have done it. He may have accomplished it. We'll certainly be able to tell when Thomas gets down to play the shot. The other question, if Thomas can go straight at the three, he's going to hide the cue ball behind the six. He could not. He couldn't hit all of the three ball. He could just see the right hand side of it, and he wanted to get that white back in behind the nine. He hasn't made that. So. No open pot for Jimmy, but a chance at it to lay a good safety. He's going to now try and the same thing and get that white back down behind the nine ball. Perfectly wow. played it. Wow. They don't do it any better than that, John. That looked like an Efren Reyes safety. He's making a believer out of me. 
immense amount of draw on that to bring it around the two cushions up behind the nine he's gonna go yeah. two rails here perhaps three to hit the three ball problem of course is even if he hits it he will probably leave Jimmy a shot if he does hit it, there is a chance of actually getting the combination on the seven. I'll show you how he's going to, if we can get an overhead, I'll show you where he's going here. He's going one, two, three, this way. Nice hit, nice hit, nice hit. Got a little lucky there. Jimmy doesn't really have an open shot. What Jimmy will probably do here is shoot the three away and hide the cue ball behind the five and seven. He seems to know the effective safety play. Looking for another magical shot like the one before. Certainly the, all the viewers over here that know Jimmy White know there of his is. magical There's touches the on the snooker table. And another great safety. He does have a good feel for that cue ball. And it's much heavier than the snooker cue ball. But I think these last few days of qualifying is, have given him the opportunity to really kind of sense how to hit that ball because he's controlling it like an expert. Jimmy certainly has played a lot of nine ball in the past in the Moscone Cup, the World Masters. And he's also got a nine ball table in his garage at home. Aha. Uh -huh. Secret. The secret is out. He'll go one rail to hit this ball. Nice hit. Again, another tactical game shaping up. <laughs> Jimmy's going to have a cut shot on the three to make it into the upper right corner. Very difficult shot. That is quite a tough shot, Jay, because even if he gets it, he could be running away, and the, the four ball is the pink four is next, and he could snooker himself on that. He's, so trying, he's trying to play, to play a the safety. safety. I'm not sure if I like that shot there, because a little bit too delicate. Over the full length of the table, a very difficult shot there. He was trying to hide the cue ball behind the six there. Now, <coughs> he left Thomas with a wide open chance. He'll make the three. What Thomas is looking at is where does he want to position the cue ball to play from the four to the five? Players in nine ball are always looking two balls ahead. He wants this angle. He would have actually preferred to have even more of an angle to come a little bit higher with the cue ball. Straight like this, he's going to make the four in here, obviously, but he's going to go with the cue ball two rails for position. He may come down here and try to play this combination, or he may come this way and play the five over here. A lot of lines, I know that. Well, he drew the ball for position. Uh, Not so good that way. Not I so think good he might be way. forced into the combination here. I think he didn't want to. I think he would have liked to have played the five into the opposite corner. It's an off-angle combination. What's going to happen? He's going to shoot the five here, leave the cue ball behind the nine. Safety. He's going the other way. Let's see. The easiest shot is to just put hide the cue ball behind the nine. Let's see. Now he's well, going he's the going. other way. He's going off this way and down the table. Whoop. Down the combination. Wow. Wow. Forced into the combination. He hadn't got exactly the position he wanted on the five. But a great mate by Thomas Engert. He leads two wrecks to one over Jimmy White now. Here you can see it. And to really make that combination, not an easy shot. And Steve Davis is up on the mezzanine level with Tony Drago. Well, thank you, Jim. Uh, Tony, you were so close to pulling off one of the great upsets in nine ball pool. How do you feel at this moment? Well, I'm pleased that I put up a good performance against someone as good as Oatman, former world champion. And I'm also disappointed the way I lost. I just wanted uh, to finish straight on the plan, but I didn't. But maybe I should have played 44 as well, you know, because uh, 
you know, I'm a bit inexperienced about it, and I, I spoke to the gentleman there, Jim Rampey, and he said to me maybe I should have played 44, which is right. But, uh, you know, I only played the game for two weeks, and I only know how to put the balls the rest. I haven't got a clue, but I did well tonight. Well, what I was very impressed with was how quickly you picked up the positional play, because the positional play, as you know, is different to snooker, and you picked it up so quickly. You must have put a lot of practice in in two weeks. No, I didn't. I was talking to you about three years ago, and you said to me, never finish straight on a ball. You remember that? And if I don't listen to you, who the hell am I going to listen to? Well, congratulations. I think you've entertained us too superbly. We're going to watch a bit more of Jimmy White in action. Cheers, Steve. Yeah, I wish Jimmy all the best. You know, and you and uh, Steve James, and, you know, hopefully you keep the snoo f snooker flag flying because I can't do it anymore now. Well, never mind. But back to John and Jay now to see some action. Right. Break shot there. Yeah, good break there from Thomas Engert. Got a chance to run out this rack and extend his lead to 3-1. Two, does the three ball go past the five there, Jay? It's pretty tight. I think he may have, if he has to, he's looking at it. He's down leaning to see if the three will pass the five. He would have preferred to shoot it in the side pocket and he may have to. No, I don't like this shot. This is good camera angle here, you can see. If he shoots the three in the side, he may have to bank the five. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Careless there. Very bad miss by Thomas Engert there. He tried to hit it so softly he could cut the five next, but that's a little bit risky. And I'm sure Jimmy will relish this opportunity. <laughs> Dressed for the occasion, Jimmy White. Like to come up a little bit further on the seven here. Yeah, he's not happy with that. It's hard to get back for this for the eight ball here. What he really needs to do here is come off the four with a lot of low English and draw the cue ball back up this way. He's got the stroke for it. Well, deciding just to sit, leave himself a very long. Eight. This is a tough shot, isn't it, Jay? Yeah, it's... He's a good shooter, so he's not afraid to shoot a hard shot. Look out. Where's the Look wide? out. Look out. Well, the pot was difficult enough on the eight ball. He got the pot, but he lost the white. Thomas Engert extends the lead. Three racks to one over Jimmy White now. Got two great lefties here. Uh oh. A little unlucky to scratch there, but he did lose the white there. The white was coming towards the top of the table. Didn't manage to. We'll see with the break what a lot of the players want to do is to stop the white in the center of the table. He didn't manage to do that. Right, he lost control. Nice setup here for Jimmy. Got to make this count. He doesn't want Thomas Engert to run away with this match. Nicely done. Nicely done. He should get these, John. Referee Jan is looking very carefully. As you know, it's fouls on any ball. If any article of clothing, your hand, the cue, anything touches another ball, it's a foul. And what that means, it's a severe penalty. It's ball in hand. So the players are very careful and the referee very alertly is watching. Here's a great result of what happens when you get ball in hand. Was Thomas Enkert scratching off of the break. This is not a good result here. Well, we've seen him scratch on an eight ball in an earlier rack and now he's not left himself in great position on the nine. Quite a thin cut into the bottom left-hand bag. That's what he's looking at. Very thin cut, very thin cut. But he's got the eye for it. Nope, that won't work. 
Well, he's reasonably got away with it. If he was going to miss it, he would like to have left it there. Here you can see just catching the ball too thick. Thomas Engert getting another chance in this rack after scratching on the break. Thomas is taking a look at this bank shot. In top right corner, he's got to put a good stroke on this ball. You don't want to baby this shot. Bam! Wow, he hit that ball for. It's going to set up good for Jimmy. Well, it's another thin cut for Jimmy. But the good thing about this cut is a left for a left-hander, he can reach this ball. Here you can see the attempt at the bank. He certainly didn't baby that. He popped it. No such mistakes on the second attempt from Jimmy White. He cuts the lead. It's three racks to two now. Thomas Engert race to nine, remember, in this last 64 stage, the 1999 World Pool Championships. Jimmy White, he'll get the break in the next one for winning the last rack. He'll be trying to keep Thomas off of the table now. He doesn't want to fall behind. We saw that in the last match. A lot of Rortman raced into a 6-1 lead over Tony Drago. Tony Drago managed to pull that back. Quite amazingly, to eight each. Thank Oliver you. was a little careless there when he had a 6-1 lead, and he had to pay for it. This is more of a case of, uh-oh. Oh, ball again, exactly the same as Thomas Engert did in the last rack. <laughs> Thomas just looking, he's got ball in hand, he can place that cue ball anywhere he likes on the table. He'll be looking for the best place to enable him to get position on the two. What, what you can expect from good nine ball players, when they get ball in hand, they will run the rack as long as the balls are spread out. That's what you expect to see. No real problem balls in this rack, is there, Jane? Nothing Nothing really difficult. Probably the key here is to get good position right here from the two to the three ball. That's his key shot. He got straight on the two ball. He's going to... He's going to go forward, back and forth across the table. He did do it. He got good He's position. He's played that here. nicely there. Yeah. He'll make the three. Well, he'll shoot the three in the corner and use a stun shot just below center with the cue ball. The cue ball will drift out towards the center of the table, allowing him a good shot at the five. That's right, Jay. He was just checking over on the other side of the table exactly where he wants the cue ball to land. Doesn't want to go too far here. That's fine. That's fine. You see, he has an angle here, Jonathan, where he can go to the side rail, come back out. He has the choice of shooting the six in the upper right corner or the side pocket. Thomas Going Enger to from Germany. Fifteen times he's won European titles. To win a championship like this, you've got to run out whenever you get ball in hand. These players are too strong. This may be the strongest field of nine ball players ever to appear in Europe. They're from, I think they're from 25 or 26 countries. You've got all the best. The Asians are great players, the Americans are great players, and they've got some great Europeans here. That's right, and we've seen a lot of them already in action in this tournament. A little close to the center bag there. He should be okay on the eight. Just losing slight control of the white there. He's all right, though. Again, a stun shot will work here. Drop the eight. Let the cue ball slide over to the other side rail and come off the rail. Just like that. And he'll be fine. No problem this rack for Thomas. You know, we've seen some great play already today. Several exciting matches. And this is only the first round of the tournament. This is amazing. This is the first day of the knockout stages of the tournament. Great matches going on.
can see Thomas Engate from Germany, 33 years of age. Only been a pro for four years. But you can see four out of five victories in the group stages, including Efren Reyes, Seven Tommy back. Kennedy, Vincent Fake, Lou Kondo Sr. Superb results all around there. Believe me, John, he's been playing nine ball a lot longer than four years. I heard, it go, I heard of him 10 years ago. Something sort of interesting, actually, looking at these results from there. The only loss he had was against Steve James, a snooker player. And now he's playing another snooker player. Lost his cue ball again. He's not breaking well. Jumping up on the cushion first before it went in the pocket there, the cue ball. If it didn't go in the pocket, it was heading off the table. Another chance with ball in hand at the beginning of a rack for Jimmy White. I'm a little uncomfortable with the position he played here on the two ball. He'll make the two. The problem he's got is how to get the cue ball over on the other side of the table for the three. Jimmy didn't make such a good choice there. So just a little careless there, or do you think he was only looking at the two and not really looking at where he needed to be on the two to get on the three? He's going to try and cut the two in the side. Oh, he did it successfully and even made the four as a bonus, but now look at his predicament on the three. Very close to the cushion, this three ball. He may be banking. Boom. Nice shot. No time wasted. He liked the bank and he took it. I can see why he's such a hero here in Europe. This guy is fearless. He got himself in a bad position, and he escaped it by making a very difficult bank shot. Long straight in the six. Should be no problem for a player like Jimmy. He's got such a good eye. Took that one very confidently as well. Just the eight and nine to reduce the deficit to four X to three. Still very much in this match. Nice Race position, to nine, remember. Down it goes. Jimmy White just trailing by four racks to three now. You know, for breaking the balls, using only his arm and not putting his body into it, he generates a lot of power. That's right, there was quite a lot of power in that. You're right there, Jay. Much more, he's developed this over the last couple of years of playing nine ball. Control on the cue ball as well there. That's a much better break than he used to have. He's looking at playing the one combination, the bank combination, into the nine. He thinks that way. He wants to make it a quick game. See that? He's lining up. He'd like to bank the one ball like this. That's not a very straight line. Like this, into the nine ball and make the nine in here. That's what he'd like to do. This will be an amazing shot if he gets it. He's going for it. It's close, wow. and he's got it. Wow. Incredible combination, Jay. You spotted him looking at that. This guy comes up with some remarkable shots. Let me tell you, he shoots shots that the, the, the other pool players wouldn't even think about and makes them. He made a combination yesterday. It was about as good a combination as I've ever seen. The ninth rack, Jimmy White's great. We got a match here. It's 4-4. Four, four. You certainly can't underestimate these snooker players. That's what's coming out of the matches tonight. You've seen Tony Drago take Oliver Ortman to Hill Hill, eight each. Before he lost in the final rack, 9-8. And here, Jimmy White holding Thomas Engert from Germany, four each. He's got Engert sweating over there in his chair. Let me tell you, he's uncomfortable. Well, as I mentioned earlier, it is interesting that throughout all of the group matches that Thomas Engert played, the only one he lost was to a snooker player. Beautiful shot.
Beautiful cut shot in the side. This guy's a dead eye. He'll shoot the four down in the end. If he makes this, get ready for another combination. He's loving his combinations throughout this tournament. Look out, nine ball. Goodbye. We got a new leader, John. Uh-oh. Had the nine going towards the corner pocket there. He made a ball. Now, this is a difficult shot on the one ball up in the end, but the way Jimmy pockets balls, I think he'll shoot away at it. He'll try to cut the one into the upper right corner pocket and just let the cue ball roll straight down the middle of the table. <laughs> Overcut the ball. He got away with it. He really has got away with that, hasn't he? He's put Thomas Engert into a lot of trouble. Thomas is going to have to go to the side rail. If you got to miss it, that's the way you want to miss it. You want to overcut it. Here's what Thomas is going to have to do here. He's going to have to go this way and this way to hit the one ball. And even if he hits it, it may turn out good. It's not an easy ball to make, that's for sure. It's a pretty big ball to hit. If he goes underneath it, he'll scratch. He's got to be careful here. He doesn't want to go underneath this ball. Well, well, I think he'll certainly be happy with that result. He got in behind it, managed to avoid the scratch, sent the cue ball, the yellow one, down to the bottom of the table. Get ready for this, John. There's a carom here off the side of the one ball into the nine. And knowing Jimmy, he's going to shoot it. Now he shot, he shot the two ball. I'm actually kind of surprised because he likes to play those caroms into the nine. Probably played the two, played the shot a little too quickly. He might not even seen the combination onto the nine. <coughs> yeah, looking at a combination one onto the two instead. Right. He just looked at that and went for the first shot, which is not a bad idea. This is not good. This is not good. Very carelessly played there. That ball should have been hit, hit softly, leaving the one ball in front of the pocket. Why he hit it that hard, I don't know. He's showing some TV nerves here. Very different to his earlier match on television, playing against Efren Reyes. No such nerves in that match. He's going for a safety here. He wants to hide the cue ball behind the four making Jimmy kick at the one. I really think from watching Thomas, he does seem more comfortable playing the pool players and doesn't seem that confident playing the snooker players. Jimmy will go to the end rail here and spin the cue ball right, on, right from there. He'll spin the cue ball with right hand side, right hand English into the one and try to knock the one back down the table. Just like this. Well. Not bad, but he has left a combination here for Thomas. He's seen Jimmy White get a couple of combinations for nine balls early on in this match. A chance to get one himself. This is not an easy combination, John. When you've got distance and you've got an angle like this, this is not an easy combination. You see where the nine is? It's not so easy to make it. You've got to get a perfect hit. I'm not so sure that he's even looking at it. He might be looking at a safety here. That's the difference between the players. If it was Jimmy White, he would have shot already. He would have taken one look and fired away. Nine very close to the pocket. He opted to play safe. On, and not a good one. It hit the point in the side pocket, came back. Certainly didn't want to send the one that close to the center bag. Jimmy's got Thomas playing a very conservative game right now. Jimmy tried to place the cue ball behind the nine, unsuccessful, but he left so much distance. 
It's, a, it's an extremely difficult shot for Thomas. This is a tough pot, isn't it? If he wants to put it to attempt it, play with a little bit of top, follow through to come off of the top cushion and up for the three. Exactly right. Exactly right. I don't know if he can make this shot right now. Yeah, he's... Look at this. He Scratched. Thomas Angered is shaky. He's afraid to shoot. That's a shot you're supposed to shoot. Even though it's a hard shot, you're supposed to shoot it. And he's afraid to shoot a hard shot right now. He knows he's much better than this, but the clearances and shot selection that Jimmy White's been coming up with have certainly unsettled Thomas in this match. This is a great chance now to go 6-4 in front. Jimmy's in control of this match right now. Three in the side. Just slide the cue ball down, back up for the four. Nicely done. No problem with this. Soft shot, little inside English. He's really learned this cue ball. <coughs> this is a man that knows how to play position and control the cue ball. He'll draw straight back right here. I think this is a very different Jimmy White than I've seen playing nine ball before. He's played nine ball a little bit slapdash in the past. Gone in, just felt that he could pot everything from wherever it is on the table and didn't really bother too much about the positional side of it. But he's trying in this competition. He knows this is for much bigger stakes. This is the World Championships, and he's giving it the respect it deserves. Perfect position. Perfect. Very easy here. Done well. Six racks to four. He's only three racks away from a place in the last 32 now. Tremendous rack again from Jimmy White. Three racks away from a victory. And boy, what an upset that would be. Well, we're saying an upset, but it's really not becoming an upset now. That the snooker players, and it in general, have really outperformed themselves, I think, here this week, Jay. John, right now, Jimmy looks like the better player of the two. He's won four games in a row. 11th track. And I don't Jimmy think White. he's done yet. Look at this, he's planting himself. He's going to break a little harder here. Made a ball. Got a little bit of a bad roll here on the one. Here are all the players who are through to the last 32. Kun Fong Li from Chinese Taipei. Li Wai Chen from Chinese Taipei. Toda from Japan. All of these have won matches today in their races to nine. Yamamoto from Japan, a great victory, 9-2. Safety then from Jimmy, but he's not played a great safety. Yeah, he's left angered an open shot on the one ball here. Look at this. All these names almost have been Asian players, just one after another. Japanese, Philippine, Chinese. Another Japanese player. This looks like the first ball that Eckert's made in about three games. Yeah, and he's really got to take this chance now, hasn't he, Jay? He's seen Jimmy, as you say, win the last four racks. And now he's got a chance to put a stop to that run. A lot of English on that ball to bring the ball around. Two cushions up for the orange five. And here's the key ball right here. Rippy and Tang Ho, two of the top American players, a veteran and another young star of the game. Both still in action in this tournament as well. A couple of guys already out of the tournament. Quinton Han losing earlier on today. Lou Kondo Jr. I like this Quinton Han. This guy's going to be a great player. <laughs> Played a great match earlier on. Quinton Han against Andam. Didn't really put a foot wrong. It was just the brilliance of Leonardo Andam that took him past. 
Players watching all the way. Mika Imminen in the center. Ronnie Wiseman, out. Marcus Shamat. Marcus got knocked out today. Fine young player from Sweden. Look out for this kid. All of the players here you see who have knocked out. Staying on to watch the third. They know the importance of this tournament and they're loving it. They're going to stay right to the bitter end and watch everything. Well, Thomas closes the gap to one game. He needed that game bad. To, he needed to stop the bleeding because he was hurting bad. Jimmy White leading Thomas Enger six racks to five. We've seen Tony Drago get painfully close to a place in the last 32, losing 9-8 to Oliver Ortman. Can Jimmy White go one better? He's got to do better on the break shot here. He's been scratching every time. That's a little better. I'd say it's a little better, Jay, but he's still losing that cue ball, isn't he? He's back up to the top of the table again. Bend. Certainly a lot of power in the break. Just He's going to play safe here. He's going to hide the cue ball behind the two and the four. Well, he he's overdrawn that. Yeah, again, uh, just not in touch. A bad feel for that shot. There's no reason why he should have stuck that cue ball out there. Straightforward safety that should have been from Thomas Engert. He's, he's made a couple of mistakes in this match. He's not playing well right now. Now Jimmy's got an open shot at the one ball. He'll shoot the one down in the lower right corner past the nine. Yes, that was a great pot, and if he can see this two ball, then it was a wondrous positional shot as well. Looks like he's shooting at it. Looks like he's shooting at it. Tried to bring the cue ball up, he did. He'll cut the three in the same corner, let the cue ball slide over to the side rail, back out for the four. It's the six and the seven that's going to be the problem here, isn't it, Jay? He's all right. He'll shoot here. Excuse me, right there. Make the three in here. The cue ball will go here, come back out for the four. Just like that. Is he going to be looking at the six and the seven there? The two awkward balls in this, this rack now. Maybe try to develop them off of this shot? Exactly. He'd like to break out that six ball right here. That's the pink four. The orange five is next. But he may well elect to try, as Jay said, bump into the six, just like that, because it was hidden behind the seven, perfectly played. Left himself quite a long pot on the five, but that was much better, better option than getting perfect position on the five and leaving the six where it was. All he has to do is roll the five ball into the lower left corner pocket, let the cue ball drift right back up the table. He took a look at it as if he wanted to play the nine, but I don't think that's wise here. Well, he looks like he's shooting them both again. He's shooting at the five and the nine. Well, that's the problem with that shot. You want to just focus on the five ball. If he just made the five ball, he'd have been fine. I think you're exactly right there, Jay. He had the nine in his mind. He should have just played, concentrated on the five. Thinking about both pots, he got neither. Engert has a golden opportunity to tie the match up here. Not really difficult at all. Just make the five. You don't have to do anything fancy with the cue ball. Just like that. He's got a little bit of a funny angle here. He needs to draw the cue ball out into the table a little bit. He doesn't want to stop right there, just like that. You see, now he's got a little bit more of a cut than he'd like, he's, but he's smart. He's taking a look at it. 
All he has to do is make this ball, John. Where the nine is, doesn't matter where the cue ball ends up, he'll make the nine. And once again, it's easier for him being left-handed to play this shot. Exactly right. Nicely around off the two cushions and no problems on the nine. We'll be tied at six games apiece. It's a race to three now. Just a race to three. Imagine that. We've come down to the last 64 in the World Pool Championships. Five racks left. Both players need three of them. Very close match. We're just following off between Oliver Altman and Tony Drago. That went eight apiece. This one could go all the way as well. This is very impressive what Barry Hearn and Matchroom Sports have put together here, John. It is a beautiful event. Sky Sports, the, to, the totality of the event. The totality of this event is really awesome. This is, this is the equal of anything that I've seen in the States. This is a great event. Maybe better. The prize money's better, I'll tell you that. That's we right. don't often get to shoot for 60,000. That's why we've been able to assemble the best players from all around the world for this tournament. Going to have to push out on this break. Not having a lot of luck with this break, Thomas Enger, throughout this match. Probably about the first one that he's controlled the white perfectly on. Frozen against the four. He's not sure where he wants to go with this. Looks like he's going over to the side. I think he should go right down the table and leave the cue ball long for Jimmy. The way Jimmy's been putting though so far in this he's match. He's thinking about going over this way. Pushing out to a snooker there. Interesting to see whether Jimmy will take this one on. No, he's putting Thomas back in. So he's obviously got a shot in mind here, Jay. That was a no-brainer there for Jimmy. I mean, uh, if you can't see the ball, there's no way you're going to take the shot. I don't know what Thomas had in mind there, but that certainly couldn't be it. Well, he's he looking, looking at coming up behind and possibly trying to pop the one into the left side bag. Well, what he really wants to do is just kick the one ball away, just like that. You're right, he, he shot at the side pocket. A little bit of luck, though. Oh, partly Jimmy's got covered, a... Partly covered the one here. I don't think Jimmy can see enough of the one to pot it. But Jimmy's got a good safety here. He's got a good safety. I hope he sees it. He can come off the one, the edge of the one, and go up and hide the cue ball behind the six and the eight. Well, he went another way. He hid the cue ball behind the four. Equally as effective. The problem with this safety, though, John, is Thomas has a shot to go over to the side rail and kick the one in. That is, go rail first and kick the one in. Just like this, straight here, and then back this way into the one. That shot can be made. That's what Thomas is looking at at the moment. He's going to want to leave the cue ball pretty close to where the one is at the moment if he does get to make the puck. Looks like he hit it pretty well. Yeah. Perfectly played, and he's got position on the two. Two passes the nine into the corner bag. There you can see it. That's not a full pocket. That's about two thirds of a pocket. So it's a difficult shot. He's shooting right at the two. Yep, it got him. <laughs> As you say, the pocket was slightly covered by the nine. Still expected Thomas to get that one.
Looking at the shot, there was, of course, the chance of a combination onto the nine there, but there should have been no need. Two passed, okay. Difficult shot when you're queuing off the rail like this, but all Jimmy has to do is roll this ball in. He'll have a shot at the three. <coughs> and now he's got a great chance. Red three looking to come down the table for the pink four. Got a good angle here, I think. He can shoot the four in the lower left corner, draw the cue ball over to the side rail. There you go. Has he come over far enough there? Jay, I think he's looking at it a little anxiously, making sure he can see enough of the six to pot into the top right. There you can see him checking. Did he get far enough to shoot the six? From up here, it looks like he's gotten far enough, but the way he's walking around the table, he's shooting at it. He's shooting at it. He's using a lot of left English, which throw. Oh, no, bad hit. That was a foul. The eight move first. And I'm sure we won't see a mistake from Thomas in this position. Six racks apiece. Jimmy's fouled, given ball in hand. Thomas Engert. That's the first careless error we've seen from Jimmy in several games, in many games since early in the match. Although the 7-9 might look quite appealing to some, I'm sure that's not what Thomas is going to be playing for. He's going to be playing for the 7 into the side bag. With four balls on the table, you definitely want to run out. can take these three balls he'll just be two racks away from a place in the last 32 of the 1999 World Pool Championships he'll also lock up seventeen hundred and fifty dollars and the next match is worth thirty five hundred the money goes up fast here and he down goes the nine seven six Thomas Engert leads Closing in on that place where he may well have to play Efren Reyes in the last 32. A player he's already beaten in the group stages of this very same tournament. Right now, he'd like to be out of this match. He's smiling. First time I've seen him smile in about eight games. He's smiling there. He knows that he was lucky to have that opportunity. That was a mistake there from Jimmy White. Giving the advantage to Thomas. Thank you. 14th rack. Jimmy thinking about that shot. He's got to put that out of his mind. He's got to stay focused so that if he does get another chance back to the table. The all-important break shot. The key to the whole rack right here. That's a good break. That's his best break shot in the match so far. He did right there, Jay. It's the second time he's had control on the cue ball. The last two breaks, they've been getting better throughout the match. And this time he's got a shot at the two as well. Immense power and perfect control on the cue ball. Everything you want from a break. There's Rimpy up there in the stands in the L shirt with his arms crossed. One of the great American players for 30 years now. The Cardiff International Arena so packed they're having to stand right at the top now. Standing room only here. He'll go two rails around the four ball. For the three, just like that. Well done. What he's trying to do here is run the balls down to the seven and play that seven nine combination. Shoot the three in the end like this. Just bring the cue ball back up this way. Draw the cue ball back up this way for the four next. He's got a little bit of angle here, Jay, so he might not want to draw too far. He could be going towards. Bottom cushion as we're looking at it now on the screen. Yeah, that's right. He had a bit of an angle, so okay, you use the side cushion. Right. Did it well, though. Did it well. He's really got no problem. He's really got no problem with this. Gonna 
it's playing to go through the three balls here and play the combination seven. That's an easy combination. That's right, Jay. No need to develop those balls down there. The seven nine will be the final shot of this rack, I'm sure. <laughs> That one mistake from Jimmy. Could it cost him the match? Of course, Thomas, if he finishes off this rack, will just be one rack away. Quite capable of finishing this one off and running the next. He's drawing the cue ball again off the side rail, back up the table for the six. Well, we were talking about playing the combination and not developing the balls, but he's got a perfect angle to develop the balls, almost a natural angle if he pots the six. The white will be heading towards the seven. You know, John, he didn't want this much of an angle on the six ball. He wanted to be a little straighter on it so he could shoot the combination. Now, he may run into the seven ball whether he likes it or not, and he may go between the balls. If he goes between the balls, he'll have the combination. That's what he wanted to do. Well done by Anger. Perfectly played there. Straightforward, surely this shot to take him within one rack. He's taken his time. All combinations are difficult. Good shot. Thomas Engert leads Jimmy White by eight racks to six. to have that same break he did last time. And it is very impressive. This has got to be rated as a chance here. Quite a thin cut on the two and tough to stay as a key position for three. He can see the power, perfect control yet again on the cue ball. <coughs> He's really worked on his break. He had trouble with this break early on in this match, but as the match has gone on, he's come good, hasn't he, Jay? Yes, he has. This is a delicate shot. We call this a kill shot. That means you use extreme low English when you cut the two ball in and hold the cue ball close to the end rail. You don't want the cue ball to roll too far. And Snooker is known as a drag shot. There you can see it, but he's played it and missed the two ball. Well, you can hear from the crowd reaction. They know what they want. A chance here for Jimmy chance he has to take. Where's he going here? Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> well, Jay, he can't have gone for that combination, surely. I don't know about this guy. Have a look at this. He's going a long way away from the three. Maybe he did go for that. If he did, that's the most amazing combination we've seen here this week. I have to think that he was trying to go down and back with the cue ball, but the way he shot it, it looked like he was playing right into the night. Beautiful shot. Nonetheless, he won the game. Thank you. It's a good break there from Jimmy. He's, well, the one landed very close to the three there. The one will go. The one will pass. One passes into the top right-hand corner. That's where he's going to be trying to cut it. Here's where he's going. The one's going right here. He wants the cue ball to come here, come back up, shoot the two in the side. This is the key shot to this rack right now. Well done. Well done. Jimmy's hot. Well, Jay, are we looking at another Hill Hill, another eight each here? I think so. Between a snooker so. player and a top pool player. I think so. <laughs> There's the man who lost the last match at eight each. He'll definitely be cheering for Jimmy White. 
to go one better than he did. He could have used a he could have used a little more angle than this on the five. He's still all right. He's got to go forward here. A little bit tougher shot. Whoa! Almost jarred that ball. Uh, he cheated that bucket there. Left himself a little bit long on the seven here. Looked like that could have stayed in the jaws of the bucket. And surely that would have been curtains. But now. Perfect chance to take the match to eight each and to that all-important final rack. This is the man they've all come to see. He's studying in this. Does he want to drag this ball here? Or does he want to draw the cue ball back into the nine? Actually, I think the smart shot here is to actually drag the cue ball into the nine. You may make the nine, and if you hit it, it's going towards the pocket. I think you're right, Jay. I think that's what he's going for. Yeah. Exactly what he's going for, and he's got it! Boy, we've had two great matches already tonight. Doesn't get any better than this, John. Wild scenes in the Cardiff International Arena. It's another eight each. This is the previous nine ball to take it to nine to eight seven and now another one to take it to eight each he needs to come up big on the break here john keep the cue ball on the table where's the cue ball he's got a ball and he's got a shot at the one this has to be counted as a chance for jimmy to take this match Any trouble here, Jay? Five ball. He would have liked to have been a little closer to the two ball here. He was a little tentative there on the one. He kind of wanted to cinch the one ball. But... If he can clear the seven remaining balls. It will be an amazing scene here in the Cardiff International Arena. The crowd will go wild. He's going to stop the cue ball right there. Boom. <laughs> this is the key shot. What he's got to do here, got to come across the table with the cue ball, just like this, just like this. He got there. Nicely done. The five goes in the lower right corner. You roll the cue ball down to the end rail with a little bit of right English. It comes off the side rail, perfect position. He's drawing, he's drawing over to the side rail. Careful. I'm not sure I like that because it left him more distance, but he's comfortable with it. Six in the end. Hold the cue ball right there for the seven in the side. Look out. Crowd are getting ready. He's working hard this rack, let me tell you. These are not all easy shots. Well done. Well, well, Jay, he's come a little far, hasn't he? He's got a bit of work to do now. He fell a little funny here. He's going to have to cut that eight ball in the lower left corner and send the cue ball around the table. He's going to have to go three rails with the cue ball up on the other end. He knows it too, that's his only shot. All he really needs to do is make this ball with the right speed. Just concentrate, Jimmy, just concentrate on making this ball. Don't get too carried away with the position because he will have a shot at the nine if he makes it. Looks like he did it, looks like he did it. How about this shot, though, Jay, for an eight each nine ball? This little, is not a straightforward shot. It's a little bit of a tough shot, but I like Jimmy here. Nicely done. Wow. 
This guy is great. Amazing scenes here at the 1999 World Professional Ball Championships. Jimmy White through against Thomas Engert. 9-8 he wins. Goes one better than Tony Drago did against Oliver Orman.